Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. All right, so next up is energy. Earlier, we talked about physical and chemical changes. Those physical and chemical changes have energy changes associated with them. So we need to know what is energy. Energy is simply the ability to do work. And work equals force times distance, which you may have learned if you've taken physics already. Um, but if you don't, that's what it is. I'm not going to get into the details of that. But So for right now, energy is the ability to do work. And energy, uh, there's this, well, there's this equation associated with energy, um, and that is E subscript T equals KE plus PE. So what are these things, KE and PE? Um, and what is ET? Well, ET stands for energy total or total energy, and that is the total energy an object has. KE is kinetic energy, which is energy associated with motion. So if we're talking about the energy of an object, the um, part of it is going to be due to the energy of motion. Um, and the last thing is PE. PE is potential energy. And potential energy is the energy due to the position of the object. So the idea here is that the total energy of any object or system is equal to the total kinetic energy plus the total potential energy those two values added together will give you the total energy an object has. Now, something that's really, really important to understand is that energy is conserved. And that is the first law of thermodynamics. Another way to actually say that is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. So um, there are tons of different types of energies. You can be talking about heat energy, kinetic energy, or potential energy, as we saw up here. Uh, there's um, we can talk about chemical potential energy. We can talk, there's a million different things. Eh, maybe not a million, but the point is there's a bunch of different types of energies that we can think about. Another thing that's very, another thing, excuse me, that is very important is to realize that when you talk a lot about um, uh, reactions in nature, nature tends towards stability, and stability really is l lower energy situations, and that hopefully makes some intuitive sense. If you want to think about it like this, think about like a toddler or, or a young child. If they're, if they're stable, if they're not really moving around a lot, they're pro it's probably because you know, they're tired, they got low energy, right? But if you give them some candy and they get all hyper, they're all kinds of unstable. So that's kind of a, a simple way to kind of think about this idea is that stability and lower energy tend to go hand in hand. And then, uh, the lack of stability, things that are unstable, are higher in energy. Okay, so let's think about some situations which involve the kinetic energy and potential energy. First example involves gravity. So let's imagine this guy is holding a bowling ball 10 meters in the air because he's gigantic and super tall. So he's holding a bowling ball at rest. So at rest means no movement, right? No movement, which means there's no energy due to motion. Okay, so that means there's no kinetic energy at this point up here at this height. However, because this ball is up in the air, you can imagine that it has a certain amount of potential energy, right? If this guy lets it go, this thing will drop, right? So at this point, due to its height, this thing has gravitational potential energy. So it has all of, all of the energy it has is potential energy. None of it's kinetic because it's not moving. However, if this guy lets it go and it drops, it'll go down to the ground. As it's falling, potential energy that it used to have, right, the, the lower it goes, the less potential energy it has, right? If this thing is falling, its potential energy is decreasing and, and the kinetic energy is increasing. Oops. The kinetic energy is increasing. So essentially the potential energy is being sort of converted into kinetic energy as this thing is falling, right? Um, so at the top here, up at this height, it's got all potential energy and no kinetic energy. And this is not a very stable situation, right? This thing could fall and I mean, it could hurt your toe. <laughs> Who knows, right? Uh, it's, it's not a very stable um, situation. It's less stable. Um, but if, things, if this thing falls, 
all the way to the ground, at the point of impact, it no longer has potential energy. All of the potential energy that it had up at this height has been converted oops, to kinetic energy. So I wrote that down wrong there. I meant to put um, it has no more potential energy, right? All of it is now kinetic. And so as soon as it impacts the ground, the ground will kind of absorb this energy. Um, and now we've got this bowling ball, and it's pretty stable, right? So this is a situation in which nature is sort of allowing this, this uh, to tend toward a more stable situation. Okay. So that's something that is studied in physics, gravitational stuff and whatnot. I'm not going to get into the de details. Another thing that's discussed in physics, um, but is also relevant and re relatable to chemistry, is the idea of what's going on with springs. So if you can imagine a spring um, that is is where, where both of its ends are connected to little blocks, right, like this. Let's just say that, that this spring has a block on either side, and these are just identical blocks. And this spring is kind of just relaxed, right, or at equilibrium, as we say. We can do two things. So we can either take these blocks and sort of squeeze them together, right? If we take our hands and we push them, right? You imagine somebody's hand pushing this and 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 pushing this, right? You can kind of squeeze them together in like this, right? And now you've compressed this spring. So now, what does this spring want to do? It wants to go back to the relaxed position, right? It wants to go back to being relaxed or at equilibrium. So what it has is it has increased potential energy. This potential energy can become kinetic as soon as these, these hands let go, and this thing will want to go back to its relaxed form. So that, that potential energy is when this thing is compressed. If we let it go, that potential energy will, be, will turn into kinetic energy to get it back to this relaxed position. On the flip side, we can do the opposite. We, could, we can stretch the spring, right? We can, instead of compressing it like he, like we did here, we can also um, uh, stretch it by pulling the blocks away from each other. So this spring is no longer uh, relaxed, right? It's, it also has an increased potential energy, right? As soon as we let it go, it will spring back into to its relaxed position, which is what it wants to do. And so again, that increased potential energy can go back to be becoming kinetic. Now, the reason why I discuss this is because this is similar to um, basically what happens to charged particles, which is actually the, the next example. And that's a little bit more relevant to, to some of the basics of chemistry. So here, something that we have to know about charged particles before we really discuss them is that this, this important simple fact that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. And you should never, ever forget this. Do not forget this. Opposite charges attract and like charges repel. And you might think, you know, why is this? Why is it that opposite charges attract and like charges repel? The answer is, again, that nature tends towards stability, and charges naturally are not stable. Things like to be neutral. Neutrality is, is stable. So just imagine these two different situations. If you take a plus charge, a plus one charge, and a minus one charge, you put them together, you get zero charge, right? And so together, they're neutral, which is stable, or lower in energy, less energy, right? But if you take two plus charges, you get a plus two charge. Also, you could have put negative one char two negative one charges to get a negative two. The point is that here, you start off with a plus charge and a plus charge, uh, two, two individually just plus one, together it's plus two. So together, you, have, you, don't, you don't have something neutral, you have more charge, more charge than you began with. Right, which is which is less stable than what you had before, just two individual charges, right? So this is unstable or higher energy, more energy. So the reason why opposite charges attract is because they can come together to to give neutrality or stability, and uh, like charges will will repel from each other because together they just make more charge, and and that's unstable. Nature doesn't tend toward less stability, it tends toward stability. So opposite charges attract, like charges repel. And so if we imagine that we have two like charges, and what we could do is we could, let's just, this example here in 3A is very similar to compressing the two blocks connected to the spring together. 
um, they don't really want to be together. These like charges, if I push them together, right, if I push, this to push these together, and I have them close together, now obviously I wouldn't do this with my hands, you can't just take a charge and push it, two charges and push them together with your hands, but if you imagine that you take two charged particles of, that have the like charge, and you push them together, they don't really want to be together, right? That's more charged, less stable. So they want to get out of that. So what would happen is that they would want, they would repel. And that's an important fact um, when it comes to, to studying chemistry. Whereas the, the opposite case, right, taking two opposing charges, positive and negative, um, they like to hang out together, right? If you pulled them apart, if you pulled them apart, to get to this situation here, where you have a plus charge out here to the left, a negative charge out here to the left, they're going to want to come back together. So they're going to, if you let them go, they're going to want to come back together. So that's, charged particles are really, really important when studying chemistry. One last example that's not really uh, like the others, but an important idea to kind of keep in mind is, that, is the idea of food. Food has energy. We, everyone knows this, right? We eat food for energy. Um, and the food that we have is made up of macromolecules called carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which some people know, some people may not know. Um, but the reason we get energy from these foods is because these molecules, these components, contain what's called chemical potential energy. And, and that is stored in those molecules as a result of the attractions and repulsions of the, of the charged particles within them. So the details of which we're not going to cover right now, but the idea here is that what we do is we eat foods that have chemical potential energy, and we take this chemical potential energy and we turn it into an energy that's usable for us. Usable energy. And then we, we use that energy to, of course, go about and do whatever, whatever our bodies need, need it for. Um, so, so the idea here is just to kind of discuss um, how energy relates to some things in our lives. Okay. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.